In any self-defense encounter, there's going to be hurdles. And without overcoming them, you're going to be done. So when are street fights fair? Well, they're not. But if you keep watching this video, we'll give you three steps to level up your game and act faster to be better at self-defense. So keep watching. Jack, so where do we start? First off, if I'm faced with a fight, I need to think about what I'm capable of. So that brings me to the first step, accept your limitations. You see, you always have to assume that if someone attacks you, they do so for a reason. They believe that they can actually dominate you and that's the reason why they're doing it. Because nobody will pick a fight if they know they're going to lose. You are essentially the weak link. So this takes us to the second point, which is key for the process. You must identify inequalities in the situation. It's likely to be size, it's likely to be group numbers, it's likely to be the environment, it could be any number of factors. So first of all, what we need to do is to be able to identify those inequalities and assess them for the next stage. Remember, the bad guy attacks you on their terms, so therefore those inequalities are going to work against you. So the last stage, and the crucial one, is to find an equaliser. You see, without actually completing the first two steps, it's very difficult for you to actually equalise or level up the situation. How do you think you would level up? I think I've got to start to immediately look at what's around me. Have I got something I can weaponize if the guy's got a weapon? Are there people I'm with that might be able to match the numbers they've got? Is there an escape route, frankly? Can I just get out of there rather than deal with this threat? You need to consider what type of body weapons you'd use, whether it be physical or even self-defense tools. My point is that to equalize is not necessarily the environment, but it's how you fight. With these three steps in mind, how do I put that into action when I'm confronted with a threat? The first step's probably the most crucial one, because if you can accept that it's not going to be fair, you're less likely to be a victim. Acceptance takes you out of panic mode. So once you're out of panic mode, you can then go into identifying what the threats and what the risks are. Okay. So this is the point. It speeds up your decision-making process. You've only got split seconds if someone's attacking you. So if I'm not wasting time worrying about why this has happened to me on the day of all days, that gives me the space and time and energy I need Absolutely. to think he's bigger than me. There's a guy next to him who's clearly with him and it looks to me like he might be armed. That gives you the space to think. I'm identifying all of these potential risks to my safety straight away, and then I'm going to action a plan on what I'm going to do. Okay, so from the identification step, we can action it as, now I know what the threats are, I can start to find out where I can claw back some advantage. If you haven't identified that actually there's four, five, six of them, and you think it's just one guy on his own, then your calculation of your self-defense is going to be weakened. We've seen this in clips time and time again where a guy is faced with a threat and doesn't even realize that some guy's up behind him and bang, sucker punch. So we want to go through this process so we can action a plan. Now the plan doesn't always mean fighting back. It could sometimes entail you having to comply. If a guy suddenly surprises me and he puts a gun to my face, worst case scenario, you're with your family, you have your child with you, there's going to be limitations on what you can do and it's not going to be a fair situation and that's the point. Given that to be the case, once you've accepted it, once you've identified the risks and the threats, you can then maybe make the decision to comply with the situation. We've got to free ourselves from thinking that fights are fair. They're not fair and if we get stuck in this thought process of why this is happening to me, you become further a victim of the situation. So what we want to be able to do is action our behavior by thinking ahead, by freeing our mind and not getting stuck into this loop of why me, why me, why me. So the takeaway is accepting that a fight isn't fair frees your mental faculties so you can actually learn to fight back quicker, more efficiently. It allows you to identify the risks and more importantly, find a way of equalizing in a dangerous situation. Thanks for watching.